This Week at NASA. The rollout of Space Shuttle Atlantis from the Vehicle Assembly Building to Launch Pad 39A at the Kennedy Space Center helped set the stage for STS-125. The servicing mission to the Hubble Space Telescope is targeted for the early afternoon of May 12th. Commanding Atlantis's crew of seven will be Scott Altman. We've made observations using the telescope that have reformed the way we understand how our universe is built. The fact that things, instead of slowing down as they get further out, are actually accelerating. It's kind of foreign to what I learned growing up in science class. And Hubble has done the science that made those observations, that analysis possible. And yet at the same time, it's an incredible platform that takes those pictures that take the average person out 13 and a half billion light years away from where we're sitting to give you those views. Over 11 days and five spacewalks, Atlantis's crew will make repairs and upgrades to Hubble, leaving it ready for another five years or more of groundbreaking research. A full-scale model of Orion, the next generation space vehicle that will return humans to the moon, was on display at the National Mall in Washington, D.C. The mock-up was making a one-day pit stop between water tests at the Naval Surface Warfare Center's Carter Rock Division in Bethesda, Maryland, and the Atlantic Ocean off the coast of the Kennedy Space Center. The operation, dubbed the Post-Landing Orion Recovery Test, or PORT, will determine the kind of motions an Orion crew could expect after a landing, as well as the water conditions the recovery team could face. We came up with a plan to build a vehicle and then test it in the different sea states so that we could then have the, the Department of Defense via the Human Space Flight Support Wing, their base out of Patrick Air Force Base, come back to the program and say, in these sea conditions, we will go rescue. Orion is targeted to begin carrying humans to the International Space Station in 2015 and to the moon in 2020. The Space Telescope Science Institute in Baltimore hosted its annual Women's Science Forum. More than three dozen female high school students from Maryland, the District of Columbia, Northern Virginia, and Pennsylvania took part in real-life, hands-on, problem-solving drills. They also shared their career dreams with forum panelists. The Women's Science Forum is part of the Institute's Youth for Astronomy and Engineering program that supports diversity and seeks to stimulate student interest in the fields of astronomy and engineering. New Orleans hosted the first Bayou Regionals. Teams from 31 high schools in nine states each built a working robot in six weeks from a standardized kit in the competition named for inspiration and recognition of science and technology. The Stennis Space Center provided monetary and manpower support with judges, volunteers, and team mentors. Three Mississippi teams from high schools in Bay St. Louis, Gulfport, and Biloxi are headed for the first finals this month in Atlanta. NASA astronaut Eric Bowe went to the ends of the Earth to visit an old classmate. Awesome. Study hard. Take you a lot of places. The STS-126 space shuttle pilot and his wife traveled to Hamilton, New Zealand on an invitation from Ree Varco a city council worker who knew Colonel Bo from school in Atlanta. And what's really neat is to see a, a, a country that you've seen on orbit first and then to come down and actually see it in person and actually get to meet the people. A NASA astronaut is in Hamilton this week. Bo also made a number of public appearances during his week-long stay. Hey, good morning, Paul. NASA honored astronaut Jim Lovell with an Ambassador of Exploration Award for his contributions to America's space program. Lovell accepted the award at the Patuxent River Naval Air Museum in Lexington Park, Maryland. I thought that perhaps having this lunar sample here for the young boys and girls coming through the museum and to see what we are trying to accomplish here at Patuxent River would give them the inspiration perhaps to follow a career in, in the Navy or as naval aviators or perhaps as test pilots and perhaps even going into space as I did way back in, in those days. Lovell spent four years at Patuxent River Naval Air Station as a test pilot. The moon rock encased in Lucite will remain on display at the museum. A native of Cleveland, Lovell piloted the Gemini 7 mission and was command pilot for Gemini 12. He and fellow Apollo 8 crewmen Frank Borman and Bill Anders 
were the first humans to leave the Earth's gravitational influence and travel to the moon in 1968. Well, Frank, my thoughts were very similar to the vast loneliness up here on the moon. It's uh, awe-inspiring and it makes you realize just what you have back there on Earth. On Lovell's fourth mission, he was Apollo 13 commander when the crew's service module was crippled by an oxygen tank explosion. Uh, yes, we've had a problem. With the help of Houston ground controllers, Lovell and astronauts Jack Swigert and Fred Hayes scrambled to turn their lunar module into a virtual lifeboat and scrape together enough electrical power and water to make it back to Earth. Apollo 13 is considered a successful failure. Fifty years ago in NASA history, America's first astronauts were introduced to an eager nation at a Washington, D.C. news conference. And so my wife called Washington and volunteered for me. The Mercury 7 were chosen from among the U.S. military's top test pilots. From the Navy, Walter M. Wally Schirra, Jr., Alan B. Shepard, Jr., and Scott Carpenter. Donald K. Deke Slayton, Virgil I. Gus Grissom, and L. Gordon Cooper were Air Force men. Ohioan John H. Glenn, Jr. was the lone Marine. I look at it, if I use the talents and capabilities I happen to have been given to the best of my ability, I think there is a power greater than I am that will certainly uh, see that I'm taken care of if I do my part of the bargain. The men were dubbed astronauts from ballooning aeronauts and Argonauts, the mythic Greeks who sailed Jason's ship, the Argo, in search of the Golden Fleece. These new explorers would bravely lead the country into the uncharted vastness of space and ultimately on its race to the moon. All of us probably have uh, read comic strips such as Buck Rogers, Flash Gordon, Jules Verne routines, and uh, if we had interest in reading things like this, obviously we had intentions of following something like this in our lifetimes. I will readily admit that uh, I didn't think it was coming this soon. And that's this week at NASA. For more on these and other stories, log on to www.nasa.com.